Hey, welcome to my channel, Poppy C Dev. In this video, we're going to cover how computers work. This video is one of the essential prerequisites into delving further into understanding how a lower level programming language like Rust works. We're going to cover how computers are made, what are their basic building blocks, how the CPU works with an example program. If you already know all of these materials, that's amazing. Feel free to skip through this video. However, if you don't understand some topics, please let me know down in the comments below or go to the Telegram this chat in the description. It helps me understand what topics should I cover next in the future and make better videos. Oh, and of course, like and subscribe. It helps a lot. To understand Rust properly or any other low-level programming language, we have to understand how computers work. Okay, let's give you guys a quick overview. The basic building blocks of computers are transistors. They look similar to this, but way, way smaller. The way they operate is with a signal on and off, zero being signal off and one being signal on. You might have heard in the past that computers use binary code. That's exactly what's going on. So when a signal on, meaning one, comes to the base of the transistor, the transistor starts conducting. When a signal zero comes to the base of the transistor, it doesn't anymore. That's it. And from these basic transistors, we can make basic building blocks like logic gates. You don't have to understand all of them, all the intricates, how this works. Maybe you can start just understanding how we can use these to create amazing programs. So let's say input A is a person has some money and input B, he wants ice cream. And at the end, the, when the storekeeper decides either to give him ice cream or not. So if the person doesn't have money, and doesn't want the ice cream, the storekeeper will not give him ice cream. If he doesn't have the money and he wants ice cream, well, guess what? He can't get the ice cream. If the, he has the money but doesn't want to buy it, he will not get the ice cream as well. But if he wants the ice cream and he has the money, well, then he gets the ice cream. And we can use all, all the other ones. Some of them you under you have maybe used when programming or some you haven't. Doesn't matter. What matters is that these are the basic building blocks in the computer. So what scientists basically decided to do is incorporate a lot of this together and we can get interesting functionality with integrated circuits that allows us to do a lot of things. But if we put many, many of these tr transistors together and logic gates, we can create microprocessors. These allow us to have faster computation time because of shorter distances, and we can have get much, much more computation out of it. So microprocessors are basically computer processors and have the functions of the central processing unit. So in these small, tiny, tiny chips, there's hundreds of millions of transistors in basically one single chip. Okay, but CPU is not the only thing we have in our computer. We have also ROM, which stands for read-only memory. This is the data that cannot be written to and can be only read. So almost every computer incorporates a small amount of ROM that contains the start of firmware. So this boot firmware is called BIOS. It contains all of the code that instructs the boot up processor for your computer. So when you turn your computer on, this is the first thing that starts up. Then we have RAM. This is random access memory. It's computer's short term memory, where the data that the processor is currently using is stored. And then we have input output systems where everything is connected. So here we have disk interface, which was in the old days known as permanent storage. Then we have the USB, where things connect like keyboards and mouses. We have the display, 
we have Ethernet, which connects to the internet, and sound. So let's see how the CPU works. Inside the CPU, there is some RAM called cache and some register and the ALU. So this is the arithmetic logic unit. This RAM is here is a bit different from the one we saw previously because this is closer to the CPU. Therefore, processes can be done quicker. OK, let's see how the computer works. So as we said before, when the computer is turned on, it starts executing the first code that is written in the ROM. Then the ROM reads the program from the hard disk and begins executing it. This program then runs the operating system. So whenever power is turned on to the computer, it's getting the next instruction code from the memory, executing it and the next instruction and so on and so on. So in this diagram, we can see two registers. Each one of them holds a data point. The computer counter, this one, is also a register, but it's a special kind of register because it points and marks the place of execution of our program. OK, so we move to the drawing board. This is basically the same picture you saw before. You have the RAM, the arithmetic logic unit, and you have register X, register Y, program counter, and the instruction register. This is another thing that's added, and I'm going to explain what is going on over this one. So let's say we have a program, very simple program. We just have two numbers, and we want to, let's say, add them together. So all our programs are loaded in memory. So RAM, we said before, is like our memory. So let's say here is the location in our RAM where our program is. And every command we have here has some sort of address. So let's say this is address number one, number two, three, ta 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 ta. So first we say we want to load load A from memory. We have um, here our memory A is equal to 30. So this is somewhere, this is a number somewhere in memory. First command is low A to register X to register X. And then the second command is load B to register X, uh, register Y. So here we fetch B. Let's say B is 10. And it's stored somewhere in memory. So the third command will be add A and B. So, OK, so let's say we have our program counter and this is in line, let's say, 40 or 30. And the program counter starts here at line 30. So it goes, OK, 30, we load A to B. This is our res instruction register. So the instruction register command is now load. OK, so load A to register X. A is loaded to register X, A is 30, and then we load B to register Y. So the program counter now is 31, and the command is again load. OK, let's load B to register Y. Both things are loaded now. Now we go to the third command. Now we're here. The program counter executes moves one number more. Now it's 32. And the instruction register is now not load anymore, but add. OK, so this is our command. 
this command has to use the arithmetic logic unit. So both numbers, register x and register y, go to the arithmetic logic unit. And here they are added together. And we get the result 40. The basic instructions that we wrote there are similar to the code that the computer is given. So these basic instructions look something like this. Don't worry if you don't understand anything. That is why we have higher level languages, so we don't have to deal with this code. And even if we did, the compiler can usually write it better and cut on some unnecessary operations that we might not have thought about. Every program you will make will be compiled down to binary code the computer will understand. In this diagram, there is one of the processes that we have. We're going to go into more details about the compilation process later in the videos. What you need to know now is the closer the programming language is to the machine code, the faster it will run. And that is one reason we, why we use Rust. Great, so this concludes our high-level overview of how computers work. If you don't understand something, please let me know down in the comments below. In the next video, we're going to cover how does the memory in computers work.